He is risen. He, amen. Good morning. How are we doing this morning? Happy Easter on this beautiful, awesome Sunday morning where we get to celebrate Jesus rising from the dead. If you're in the back, come on in, and we are going to begin with a couple announcements this morning. First announcement, I do see a lot of new faces this morning that I might have not seen before. Uh, if you are new to Harmony Grove, welcome. We are glad that you are here this morning. Uh, we have services from 10.30 to 11.30 every Sunday, and then we usually have Sunday school at 9.30. If you are new, we would like to get to know you a little bit. In the back, we have these green cards. In the front, there is some information that you can fill out that we can get to know you. And in the back, we also have some prayer requests. If you are needing a prayer on a certain thing in your life, you can fill it out and then you can put it in one of our two bins. We have a bin to my left, your right, and a bin in the back. So if you want to fill out some information to make us to get to know you, and also if you want some prayer requests so that we can pray for you as a church, you can fill that out and then put that in one of the two bins. Our second announcement this morning is we had our annual Easter egg hunt yesterday and it went really, really well. Uh, we had 81 kids and that is the most we've had since pre-COVID. So it went really well uh, and I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much to all the helpers who volunteered from whether helping with crafts, helping with uh, scattering Easter eggs that we used all of them, which was pretty surprising, and uh, just helping with food or just anything in general. If you helped, that was really helpful to make the Easter egg hunt go smoothly and well. We really appreciate you and thank you for your help. And uh, if you wanted to help and you didn't help, there's always next year. So we're not getting rid of it, don't worry. Uh, our final announcement this morning is uh, not by me. It is from Miss Betty who is making her way to the front. And we have a special announcement this morning for VBS. kicking off another year of VBS. Our VBS this year is Dupa, and I'm co-directing with Carla, who's upstairs, so she couldn't be down here this morning. And I'm bubbling with excitement for this year's VBS. We are going to present Scuba, which is diving into friendship with God. Not only do we want to bring children to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, but we want to go further and have them deep dive into God's word and learn what the verses mean and we're having something extra this year we're doing something called sticky scripture we want the scriptures to stick to their hearts so we're having an imagination station so the kids can see an object lesson to understand the verse as well as memorize it so we're very excited and but we need your help we need listeners we certainly want to surpass what we uh, the children we had last year bring more children to Christ and we just hope that if the Lord lays it upon your heart to help that you would help if you cannot we need people to cut you're going to be seeing lots of octopus things on the wall instead of monkeys this year and we have tons of things to cut so we have pre cut work you can do and if you cannot do that then if you want to pray for us and distribute the literature we're trying to make sure you have enough literature back there to give to neighbors friends put in restaurants you know give us all the publicity you can so that we can bring children to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ it's going to be the last week of June Sunday June 23rd to Thursday June 27th there's no Friday VBS and it's going to be 630 to 845 we added 15 minutes this year we're going to try that because we needed a little bit more time for our thing so we're very excited and we hope that um, you join us and bring your scuba gear and join our team. We'd love to have you. There's a sign up sheet in the back. If you have any questions, you can see me or Miss Carla. Thank you very much. Good morning, I'm gonna have my mom pray and we're going to begin with worship in a moment. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you that we can praise you today. Lord, we know it is such an opportunity that we get to praise you and to study your word. And Lord, we pray that you will open our eyes today as well as our hearts and help us to see what you would have us to see today. 
Lord, just be with us as we fellowship with one another and with family today as well. Lord, let us take those opportunities with loved ones to share your love and your truth today. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Before, we, before you stand, I'm going to read some scripture from Isaiah chapter 53. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Please stand as we start with, oh, praise the name.
38. It says, The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lays. Then go quickly and tell the disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples.
Okay, our scripture reading for this morning is Romans 6, verses 8 through 11. And those songs are great. Happy Easter to everyone that's here this morning to worship and praise the Lord Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> he is risen. He was killed for our sins. Spent three days in the grave. But today he's arisen and we serve a risen savior. He's coming back for us. But um, let's start with six, eight. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion 
over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also. Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Please stand as you are able as we do the old rugged cross. <laughs>
Kids, have you been dismissed yet for junior church? I got to do that. Hey, kids, your turn to go down the junior church so you can head on up. You're going upstairs to the fellowship hall. Glad you're here this morning. I'm Pastor Jim Crosley. I've been the lead pastor here at Harmony Grove for just over 12 years. Um, if you're part of our church, welcome. If you're first time in a long time, welcome. If you're a visitor, welcome. Usually we go verse by verse through books of the Bible. We're going through Matthew. Um, he is the cutest little thing, isn't he? You're not paying attention to me yet. He is adorable. Those little suspenders. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I can't pull off that outfit. It's been a while since I've had hair. Hey, no matter where you're at, this is a little bit of a different message. It's a different day. It's Easter. Um, as I was preparing for this, I thought, hey, if one of my friends came, or one of your friends came, and they didn't know much about church, what would be a message that would help them, but also help people who've been in church a long time? And this is what we're going to go through this morning. We have an insert if you want to follow along. We're going to try to answer three hard questions this morning. Three of the hardest questions are, who is God? How can I know God? And why, do, why is Easter important? Because as a church, as Christians, we make a big deal about Easter, but really that's like the third question. Because Easter doesn't matter if you don't know who God is and you don't know, know, know how to know God. So who is God? We're going to go all the way back to the beginning. Um, Psalms 19 verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. So the idea is that in creation, in the world, in the universe, you can see how big, how powerful, how awesome, how creative, how beautiful God is. The heavens declare the glory of God. That when you look up, and you see the clouds, or you look up at night and you see the sun, the moon, the stars. Literally, the universe declares the glory of God. Right? And in creation, we see a little bit of who God is from what he has created. Now, you might not believe in God, and you might not believe in creation, but I'm going to meet you halfway as we start. I'm going to describe the universe to you in the next ten minutes, I'm going to let you make your choice. Fair? So scientists will say that the universe is about 100 billion light years in distance. That if you can measure from one end to the other, it would be about 100 billion light years. We'll get into that in a second. I'm going to give you a little bit of science just to wake you up. Right? So, again, the universe is about 100 billion billion light years in distance. Now, if you measure from that door going out of the sanctuary up to that screen, this sanctuary is 100 feet in length. So the scale, one foot, would be a billion light years. Does that make sense? No, but nod your head yes anyway. Good. So we're going to let one foot measure a billion light years, so that would be from the door to the screen. The sanctuary is only 75 feet in width, so to get to 100 feet, you'd have to go outside to where we had the Easter egg hunt, or you'd have to go across till you see the building out that window. That would make it 100 feet in width. Also, the, billion, the, the universe would be 100 feet in height, which would be like a 10-story building. I can't do that one, but we're going to focus primarily on length, so 100 billion light years um, is the width of the universe, again, one, light, one billion light years is the size of this ruler. You might be thinking, what is a billion light years? A billion light years, a light year is literally 5.88 trillion miles. So the length of the universe is something like 100 billion trillion miles, or 588 and all those zeros behind it. So that's how big everything is. Crazy, isn't it? The question is, where are we in that universe? So, if the sanctuary were the size of the universe, we would be this dot. Actually, that is not true. Not our solar system is this dot. Not our galaxy is this dot. If you divide this dot up into a thousand pi slices, we would be one slice in the pi of this dot in the 
sanctuary that we're in. It's crazy, isn't it? So I'm going to do something here. This is the middle point right here where I made an X. And I'm just going to put this piece of paper here. So that's where we are. But again, that's not our planet. That's not our solar system. That is our galaxy. Now, we are in the Milky Way galaxy. We're a bigger galaxy. We actually are a galaxy over 100 billion stars. Um, you, see the, um, you see that's kind of what it looks like. This is what a galaxy is broken down into. So um, we revolve around the sun. A galaxy revolves around a black hole. Somebody go, ooh. What is a black hole? I don't know, but it sounds a little scary. But that's what a galaxy, it's a central mass, that is what a galaxy revolves around. And again, we're still in the middle of it. We're, oops, I don't want to trip. We're right here somewhere. And then a galaxy, this galaxy has all these, what we're going to call space clouds. Um, it is dust and particles and gas that gives it a cloud-like appearance. Um, so we, in this dot right here, we are one one thousandth of this dot. If you make it in the pie slices, and the gal and the universe is from the front door all the way to the screen. Again, the heavens, the universe declares the glory of God. So I just gave you how big everything is, how small we are, and now I want to build out some of the rest of the galaxy. So. We know that we are in a solar system that has how many planets? Again, it depends on how old you are. Some of you are saying eight. Some of you are still fighting for Pluto at nine. I'm with you. It's nine. That's how I grew up. My teachers were right. Yours are wrong. We, di we, di we disagree. Um, but we're going to build out the, um, the galaxy. So we've found a couple of other planets outside of our solar system. Um, so the closest planet is still within our pie slice. Um, it is that newfound planet still in the Milky Way. Two Christmases ago, we, we launched this. It's the James Webb Telescope. Nod your head if you remember this happening. Nod your head if you were just opening presents on Christmas morning in 2022, and you were just excited to do that. So when we were kids, we had the Hubble Telescope. Someone remember that. Now, the Hubble telescope was like your grandma's TV. It was small. It was not great reception. It did not have great clarity. Nod your head if you ever had to go like this with your um, antenna and someone tells you to hold it so they could get the picture in right. Again, Sophia doesn't know that struggle. Some of us older people do. So the Hubble telescope was like an old analog TV. The Webb Telescope is the new, high-definition, bigger, can see farther telescope. Does that make sense? Nod your head if you're awake. Good. So we can now see um, from that dot 13 and a half feet. So from that dot, we can see to where I'm standing here. You can see just past um, Al Jacobs that way. If you're in the same pew, you can see two-thirds of the way down the pew. We can now see about a quarter of the universe if we go across. Again, we're going to put ourselves in the center because why not? It makes it easier that way. But we can only see about, a, a, about 13 feet this way, 13 feet that way, 13 feet out. Um, at about 13 feet, we've discovered 723 galaxies just like the Milky Way. And you may have seen these pictures online. Um, we can see some of the far distance parts of the galaxy with some clarity. This is the Carina Nebula galaxy. It has a lot of cool space clouds. Um, Stephen's Quintet, you see four galaxies clustered there. Um, and in the midst of it, if you kind of amplify the smallest speck, you can kind of see some of the furthest away things. And I bring that up. Because the, the farthest star we know exists from that piece of paper goes all the way to this Bible. So we can see with a little bit, almost half, a little bit more than half of the universe. Which also means we know things are out in the universe that they exist, but we can't even see. 
Just like we know that there are fish and things living on the bottom of the ocean floor, but we don't have technology to get five miles deep. We know it's there. We can't tell you exactly what's happening. But all of this shows the awesomeness of God. So a question of faith comes into place. How did the universe start? If you believe creation, I, you might believe evolution. Now evolution would say that the universe started with cosmic grapefruits or cosmic softballs. Look, it's up there. It's even on this screen. It's just, for some of us with bad eyesight, it's really small. It's right there. Right? That somehow cosmic softballs are spinning around and all of a sudden they collide it about 14 billion years ago. And from this collision, from these cosmic softballs, everything started to expand and everything started to evolve and the universe is still growing and expanding and evolving to this day. I don't know how the cosmic softballs came in the beat. They never give you that answer in your textbooks, but somehow these things were spinning, they collided, or that all this isn't random, and all this isn't by chance, that we are fearfully, wonderfully made, and the universe shows just how powerful, just how awesome, just how great God is. That God is the one who created the heavens and the earth, the, the trillions of stars, the billions of galaxies, all the planets, and even us. Again, it's a question of faith. And what we would say is who is God? God is the creator of the heavens and earth. So that the heavens, the universe, shows the glory, the awesomeness, the power, the majesty of God. And that when you look up to the skies, they proclaim the work of a creator. That we are created with a purpose that God designed and made each and every one of us. And if that is true, well then how can I know God? If God formed this and God created this, well how do I know this creator God? And I got some good news. You want some good news? The good news is that God already knows you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that God formed you together in your mother's womb, that God, in the midst of all the universe, can see into that dot. He knows exactly where you're sitting this morning. He knows everything about you, even the number of hairs you have on your head. God knows the thoughts on in your heart. So the good news is, God knows you. The question is, how do I know him? him. Got to give you one more science slide, and then this will make sense. So when we are created, God created us two parts. God created and designed the outer shell, and then God breathed into man, that we are physical and that we are spiritual. And the spiritual part is what sets us apart. We have thought, we have reason, we laugh, we have critical thinking. We have all these things inside of us that separates us from all other creation. Nod your head if that makes sense. Good. So there's a physical and there's a spiritual component to us. Now the physical part of us is that God sets the standard. So what do we mean? So God is the one who holds everything in place. So if you look at our earth, God allows our earth to spin and do so on an axis. We have day and night. We don't burn or freeze. It sustains life. God allows the moon to spin around the earth, giving us tides. God allows us to go around the sun, giving us seasons and years. God sets everything in motion, and God keeps those things in motion. Again, God sets a standard. So if I drop this ball, what's going to happen? It's going to drop, and it's always going to drop at the same rate. It's called... Gravity, good. Some people are passing high school or middle school science. This is good. But these things are consistent with God, right? He sets the standard. He sets these things in motion. He allows these things to be constant, right? And God holds us all together. And we agree upon that, don't we? 
So as God sets the physical standard, so God sets the spiritual standard. And here's the bad news. God's standard is this. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And this is bad news. Because I'm the only perfect one here. <laughs> My kids are laughing the loudest. No, I'm just making sure you're awake, right? The idea of being perfect is you see a dart board there, a dart, dart board there. The God standard is that perfect ten. And if we're being honest, no one's a perfect ten, right? We all miss the mark. And if we're being honest, some of our actions are like we're not even throwing at a dartboard. I mean, we say things we don't want to say. We think things we don't want to think. We do things we don't want to do. We hurt the people we love the most. We are selfish and self-centered. We're not even close to perfect. We fall way short. The Bible has a word, it's called sin. Sin is literally to miss the mark. And from a holy creator, creative God, we miss the mark, we miss the dartboard, we miss by a mile. We fall way short. Another cool thing about us, the size of our brain is about the size of a Gatorade um, bottle. Actually, the size of our brain is close to the two softballs put together. Pretty close, isn't it? When we're born, our brain is a couple of ounces. As you are full grown, it gets to be about three pounds. Interesting, isn't it? Has um, billions of newtons, trillion cells. It is one of the most complex things we have. And yet, in our three-pound size brain, we try to say to God, we want to change the standard. We want the standard to be what we want it to be. But the problem is we don't set the standard. God does. We say, hey, if we're good, we should be able to get to heaven. If I do more bad, good things than bad things, I should be able to get to heaven. I should be able to determine my own fate. I should be able to change my own heart. And we say to the creator God, in the speck of who we are, in the vastness of his universe, this is how we should be because we say so. And if we think about it, that's crazy, isn't it? We are sinful. We fall short. Bible says, the way, for all have sinned, me, you, my kids, your grandkids, all fall short of the glory of God. That if God sets a standard, and we think of who we are in relation to who, who he is, we fall way short. What happens is, we not only fall short, but in our selfishness and our self-centeredness, we push God away. We don't want his way. We want our way. We want it right now. We want it the way we want it. We live how we want to live, and we push God away because of our sin, because we fall short, because we miss the mark. And what happens is if we die this way, we push God away for all of eternity. Wages of sin is death. And that's the bad news. And the good news is the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And this is why Easter is important. Because God sets a standard and we can't earn our way to him by being good. So God made a way. He took the first step so that we can know him. And this is why we celebrate Easter. And again, just like Steps one and two, this again starts with God. So to recap a little bit, who is God? God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we can look to his creation and we can see the glory and majesty of almighty God. That in the, the width of this sanctuary, we are just a speck on a piece of paper. And not even that. So how do we know God? 
Well, the good thing is he knows us. The bad thing is because we miss the mark, because we fall short, we can't know him on our own. We are selfish and self-centered. We sin. We fall short of the glory of Almighty God. So why is Easter important? Easter is how God made a way for us to know and walk with him. We celebrate Christmas because God so loved us, he came to earth. That Jesus came to earth to show God's love. I mean, think about it. The almighty creator God could have came and been entitled. But no, Jesus was humble. He was born in a manger. Born to common parents. My dad was a roofer. Jesus' dad was a carpenter. And through his life, he shared and showed the love of God. He had compassion and, and grace. He healed people. He taught people. He was the example of the perfect God here on this earth. And God so loved us, not only he came and not only he lived, but God so loved you that he died. That Jesus was perfect, completely flawless, never missed a mark, and he, he took upon himself our imperfection, our sin our shame, our guilt, those things we want back, those things hidden in our heart, that Jesus on the cross took our sin upon himself, and he bled and he died. And we call it Good Friday, not because he died, but it's good for us because our sin is now paid for through Christ on the cross. A couple moments ago, Randy read from Romans chapter 6. You didn't think I was going to preach an entire sermon and not get into our Bible, did you? As I mentioned, this is a, a different type of message. Usually I just stand up here with an open Bible and we go verse by verse through a passage. We're going through the Sermon on the Mount. If you come back next week, we'll, we'll pick it up in Matthew 6 and, and you'll get me standing like this a little bit more often. But if you're in Romans 6, kind of in the, the middle of that paragraph. Now if, Christ, now, if we die with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. That Christ bled, he died, he was buried, and we celebrate Easter because Jesus arose from the grave. That death did not have power over him, that he paid for our sin, and he shows he is victorious because the grave is empty, because Jesus rose again. He lives, that, um, that he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourself to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why is Easter important? Because God loved you. He died on the cross to pay for your sin. And though he was dead and buried on the third day, he rose again. Jesus is the only way to have your sins forgiven. That your new life starts in Christ. That is, the tomb is empty, that we have assurance that we can be forgiven. And as Christ arose, that when we die, we will not die, um, but we will live forever in heaven with Jesus. Yes, this physical body dies, but it's the spirit that lives on. And that is what um, ascends to heaven with God. So how can I know God? Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the life can't get to God the Father except through faith in Jesus. God so loved you, he sent his son. If you would believe in Jesus, you don't have to perish. You can have everlasting life. This is the story of Easter. We can't get to heaven by being good, so God made a way for us to know him. And it's only through Christ. 
Who is God? He's the creator. How do I know God? Well, on my own, I got the sin problem. I missed the mark. Jesus came. He paid for my sin. That if I would trust and believe in Jesus, I can be forgiven and I can know God. So, as we end, we ask ourselves two questions to think about. One, have you ever trusted in Jesus? Some of you have been to Easter before. Some of you have heard the story before. Some of you know the Bible verses I've quoted. Some of you know, no, 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 no. This is not answers on a test. This is the state of your soul. So it's different to know it than to trust and believe in your heart. Have you ever trusted Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins and put your faith in him as your Savior? Not as your answer on a test, but as your Savior. And if you've never done that, right where you're at, bow your head in your own heart, pray and ask Christ to be your Savior, to forgive your sin. And the second question, and maybe you've come to church, and maybe you know Christ, and maybe you believe in God, and as I've laid out the universe, I ask you this question. Well, if God can control the universe, if God can handle all of this, do you trust him to handle the issues of your life? Because sometimes we worry and we fret and we're like, God, what are you doing? And I wonder if God you know, is up in heaven looking over the universe that he created, looking into this tiny speck that is us and going, yeah, I got this. Do you, do you see what I got as well? You know, there's a trillion stars and I know them by name. There's a billion, there's a hundred billion galaxies and I hold them in place. Yes, I can hold the issues of your life. You are in the palm of my hand. I got this. But do we trust God? And sometimes we come to church on a Sunday morning and we can trust him here, right? We can sing the songs. We can praise. We, we can say, God, we love you right here. But, you know, we get out the door an hour down the road, and it's like we lost our faith, right? Look, I, I, I show you this map of the universe because I want you to know God has this. He knows you. He formed you. Christ died for you. He wants to walk with you. And whatever you got going on in your life today, and whatever the issues that you're dealing with, God is in control. And he is good. And we should yield our entire lives over to him. Amen? And with, with that, we say he is risen, and he is risen indeed. Hey, I'm going to pray. We're going to sing a final hymn as we close our service this morning. God, the heavens declare the glory of God. The sun, the moon, the stars, even a hundred billion light years of distance in our universe. And God, if you know all this and you control all this, Lord, you know us and you can um, oversee and guide and lead us in the issues of our life and the issues of our heart. And Lord, if there is some here this morning that don't know you, that have never yielded, that never put the, the trust of their salvation in you, God, I pray that they would admit their need and acknowledge you as their Savior. So it's in Jesus we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing. I'm going to move this out of the way so we don't trip over it later.
Let's pray together. Father, though we miss the mark, though we are not perfect, Lord, we are so thankful that Christ died for us, that he took my darkness and our sin and our shame, and Lord, he paid for it on the cross. That through Jesus, though we were dark, we can be made as white as snow. That as the tomb is empty and as Jesus arose, Lord, we know someday we too will arise that we'll spend eternity with God in heaven. And Lord, if you are working on people here, if there's someone who hasn't trusted in you, God, I pray that you would um, just be tapping and knocking on the door of their heart, that they may receive you as Savior and follow you as the leader of their life. God, help us this week to follow you as the leader of our life, Lord, that you have got this, that you have the universe in your hands, and you, Father, we can trust you for the issues of our life. So we thank you and we praise you this Easter morning. It's in Jesus we ask. Amen.